you guys, my name is Jamie. Today I want to discuss for my argumentation paper um, Huey P. Long. I became fascinated with Huey P. Long when I was studying in um, Louisiana at Louisiana State University and we had to take a course on Louisiana history. I found him to be a very dynamic character one who completely intrigued me and so when we started talking about demagogues the first thing that i thought was huey p long um i fell in love with him not only because of his history and studying him but because of the influences that he has on the campus at louisiana state university um a little bit about huey p long he became um, a politician in 1918 and went all the way through to become a governor in 1932 and um, became a state senator uh, shortly thereafter. He was assassinated in 1935 um, and due to complications they didn't notice that he was bleeding from a wound to his back. He ended up dying um, when they thought that they could save him. So there's a lot of controversy surrounding him, but he is highly fluent, highly influential, <laughs> sorry, in Louisiana still. Um, Huey P. Long was a Democrat and he put into place certain tax structures that are still seen today um, for education, for healthcare, and for the infrastructure of Louisiana. He built and paved roads so that Louisianans could easily access other areas when it was in a time that they didn't have roads, they didn't have highways, and so he built those for him. He created a banking system that even during the Depression, it did not fail. Um, I think that out of the entire state of Louisiana, only a handful of banks closed during the Great Depression, and that was because of Huey P. Long's influence um, and politics. He also was really, really influential with LSU. He um, created kind of the, the system that we have in place today, low tuition, um, scholarships. He also helped create the Golden Band from Tigerland, um, which I was um, a member of in the Color Guard, but Huey P. Long believed in the band. He believed that the band should be there for the football players, and he marched them down the hill, a tradition that is still held in Louisiana today. Um, and he also created the program that um, was still in place when I was there in 1998 to 2003. Um, so that's a little bit about Huey P. Long and his influence. I also believe in my um, article that I want to kind of touch a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little bit on what was happening in Louisiana at the time. Louisiana is steeped in French culture, um, that of this idea even through like Mardi Gras how people can be kings for a day um, and Huey P. Long kind of took that idea and ran with it. Um, this was during the Great Depression in Louisiana so there were a lot of very poor impoverished people something that Huey Long talked about a lot in his radio um, speeches and he also um, was able to speak to the people, something that was not highly seen among politicians. So he was able to speak to the aristocracy of Louisiana, the people in the French Quarter at the time. He was also able to speak to the backwoods Cajuns and speak their talk. Um, if you've never heard a Cajun speak before, just listen to a couple sound bites of Coach Ogron from LSU. <laughs> Nobody can understand him except for people that have actually lived and been in Louisiana. Um, but Huey P. Long was able to do that. He was a fantastic orator. Um, some describe him as one of the best um, of all time. And um, so what I want to do is I want to examine two of his speeches. One is Every Man a King, 
Um, this has influences from the idea of Mardi Gras in Louisiana, where people are kings for a day. Um, under his plan of every man for a king, he also gave a speech called Share Our Wealth, which is another primary source that I'm using. So I'm looking at both Share Our Wealth and Every Man a King for elements of demagoguery. Um, I plan on using Robert Miller's definition um, in D&D &D to kind of define the aspects of demagoguery. So polarizing complicated political situations, um, determining policy by arguing identity and motivation, presenting situations that are so dire um, that it justifies any um, action necessary, although he didn't ever move into the actions necessary, but situations were dire, it was the Great Depression, so he did play a lot on that. Um, that the truth is easy to perceive and convey, he relies heavily on fallacy and places emphasis on the need portion, which is something that Huey P. Long does in his speeches. He places great emphasis on the needs of Americans and the needs to redistribute wealth across the board. Um, I have not yet decided, even at this point, whether or not I will come out and say that he is a demagogue. Um, under the definition of Robert Miller, he definitely would fall under the category of um, a demagogue. But I have a secondary source um, by Henry Dethlov called The Long's Revolution or Populist Retrenchment. And it discusses Robert Miller's definition of demagoguery and also goes into this idea of what is a populist? What is a Democrat? What's a Southern Democrat? Because Southern Democrats, and I've got another secondary source that talks about this, a Southern Democrat takes the fall as a demagogue by definition. They're in the South and they're Democrats. Um, and so a lot of times, they end up getting that hard hit of demagoguery. So I kind of want to look at that too. So I'm thinking it's a comparison contrast between Death Loss article and um, Patricia Robert Miller's um, definition of demagoguery to see kind of where I truly stand between that Southern Democrat and the demagogue. Something that will help me um, to be able to express this further is the fact that Long was an everyman. He was able to speak to the people. He was able to transform himself um, into, you know, a backwoods speaker, one who could like roll up his shoulders and speak to the crowd and get them interested. But he was also, because I believe I didn't write this down, but he went to um, an Ivy League school. Sorry, there was a hair right there. Um, he went to an Ivy League school. And so he was able to speak to the aristocracy, to speak to the nation, to speak to the politicians and the government in the White House. Um, but again, he was able to transform himself. He could walk up to a microphone and speak to every person in the nation and tell them, hey, call your buddy, call your friends, come back, because I'm gonna talk about this in a second. He believed that every person should have a fair, um, their own fair share. So that was what the Share the Wealth program was about, that every man is a king in his own right and that he should be allowed to be. So that has the backings of um, the Mardi Gras and the king for the day element with French um, influence. And he, um, I thought I wrote this down. I don't think I did. Um, but he believed that every person should be allowed to have a car at the very minimum, to have a house that was worth $5,000, um, and to have a radio, mostly to listen to him because he loved the radio. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go into his oratory skills. I may because um, he was very influential in the radio programs, and I've got secondary sources um, by a man called Borman who has analyzed Long um, 
several times. So um, that's kind of where I'm going. That's where I'm heading with the comparison contrast between the two definitions. And again, um, through examination, I believe that I'm going to find that he falls under the Southern Democrat um, every man category and that he is not a true demagogue even through his speeches but from the definition of roberts miller he could be displayed as a demagogue so that's it bye